Greetings, everyone. Um, thank you for joining me. I believe we should be um, believe we should be recording. So please keep that in mind as we are going through this conversation. You will notice that you have access to a question panel. Should you have any questions about anything that I'm chatting with you about, um, please feel free to drop them in there. I will do my best to weave the answers into the content. Um, anything that doesn't naturally fit into the content, I will acknowledge your question, but we will possibly answer certain questions at the end of the session. So. Um, Congratulations for joining me today. Um, if you are joining me today, that means that you are looking to grow your career. You're looking um, either looking into moving into business analysis or expanding your credibility within that space that you're already in. So one of the things we want to start with is we want to hear from you about what might be holding you back from moving into and earning um, the amount of income that is more likely when you gain certification in any function, right? But specifically for business analysis. So I have sent out a quick little poll, if you wouldn't mind responding to that, and we will move forward. So I have one person that's responded so far. If you wouldn't mind, please take a stab at that. Okay, two people. Give you just a minute to consider that. Find the option that you feel most appropriately represents your, your barrier. Looks like we just have a couple more individuals to vote. So if you wouldn't mind, please take a stab at that. Okay, we have um, a little more than half that have answered. Um, it's probably a decent enough uh, representation of the group. And it looks like out of the options, 50% uh, of respondents have stated um, not enough mentor support, not enough access to someone that can help you understand how can you succeed, um, either in the business analysis discipline itself, in the, in the certification process, uh, whatever. And then 33% of you have said, um, knowledge um okay so we've shifted up a little bit we've got another one that has voted so inadequate uh, skills and knowledge are kind of neck and neck still with mentor support out there in, in, ahead of the pack and i will say that it's very likely that um, if you're having challenges with building the skill you probably don't have the right mentor support if you are trying to build knowledge probably easier with mentor support and that's probably why more people have um, have flagged the mentor support as a higher um, as a higher impact. Okay, so um, I'm going to close out the poll now so that we can move on because we have some pretty good information to be going through. So these are the four things that um, are typically things that an individual will need in order to succeed in the BA discipline and in the BA uh, career path. Um, interestingly, uh, you're going to improve your, um, your BA knowledge and your branding through certification. So gaining certification immediately, having a certification, particularly one like this, um, for anyone that in general certifications that are, that are associated with a specialty increase your credibility, but anyone that is familiar with the IIBA certification process, um, that holds even higher weight than some certifications out there. Um, I um, myself, I, I didn't have a chance to introduce myself to you, but um, I, my name is Laura McCoy. I have been a business analyst for about 25 years. Um, I got certified in 2011. I have three college degrees, all four point. 
I'm a very good test taker, particularly. Um, and this test definitely challenged me differently than any test I've ever taken. I've gotten other certifications before. I've even received insurance um, licensing, and that was miserable because it was boring. Um, a little complicated, but this exam, this exam comes with high credibility if you can pass it. Um, now, tools and templates and mentoring, that's a lot more about learning and doing, right? And having someone that's been there, done that, guide you through it. Um, and so one of the nice things is that you do have resources available to you through a combination of IIBA, companies like Adaptive, which is what I'm representing with you right now. So there are tools out there for you to help you move forward and move up in that career. And right now, in the world of COVID and in the world of change, I mean, we have never, the amount of necessity for change is unprecedented in the past year and a half. We have never had to change as quickly, as successfully as we have with this current situation. So this is a perfect example of times when business analysts can 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 grow and certification definitely helps um, as you see on your screen we have and this is just two of them we have example after example of people that their career shifted when they did it me personally um, years ago right uh, i didn't have the luck of having something like um, i didn't have the luxury of having an organization with as robust of an offering as adaptive i had decent access but it was not like this is. This is definitely much more uh, appropriately structured for success. But as soon as I got certified, I got, a, I got a bonus. Within six months of that, I was leading a team um, uh, indirectly, right? I was a lead BA. And within six months of that, I was a supervisor and my income increased accordingly, right? So it's definitely valuable. By the end of this webinar, you're gonna understand why that's valuable. You're going to understand how do I go about it? How do I do this thing? Um, how do I get access to the right things that help me be successful? And um, as we go through this, obviously, please pop out your questions in the questions in the questions section. Now, we do have an offer at the very end of this, so please hang out with me. Um, I will do my best to keep it within the one hour time constraint, but I do have a lot of really good stuff to share with you. So why be certified? Certification. That probably means there's a test. And I don't know about you, but that doesn't excite me, right? Um, tests are never really fun. They have a lot of stress associated with them. So why go through the trouble? Why put yourself through the misery? Well, um, certified business analysts earn more money. It's just statistically evident they earn more money. Um, and part of that is because they get better opportunities. They move up. I was a perfect example of that. It does, and, and I had been a business analyst for almost a decade and a half before I found IIBA. And through the process of gaining that certification, I, I learned things I had never been exposed to before. I learned new ways to look at things. I put a lot more tools in my tool belt because of all the techniques I was exposed to. And most of us do business analysis because we love it. It comes with a lot of challenges, particularly interpersonally and people um, not necessarily responding super positively to you because you represent change and change is scary. So why do that? Why live in a world of constant resistance, constant rejection, constant stress of change? Well, because we are motivated. Most business analysts are motivated by making the world a better place one project at a time, right? I was, I've been on a panel of BAs and PMs, and most of the most of the BAs and PMs that haven't been in there very long would say things like, I like solving problems. I like getting things done. I like seeing what I'm doing come to fruition. And my response was, I want to make the world better one change at a time. Because every change I implement, if I do it right and I do it with the customer in mind, I'm making their day better. If I make their day better, everyone they touch can 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 benefit from that positive improvement, right? So this certification, certifications are only as good as the body that provides them. And this is provided by IIBA. This is not adaptive. It is IIBA, the International Institute of Business Analysis. They are the largest organization for business analysis. They are worldwide and they only do business analysis. Now what that means is they, get, they are very, very good at business analysis best practices. 
because of that, they have a ton of registered members all over the world, and it increases every day, and this number is probably old, okay? Now, they provide six certifications. Three certifications that are most interesting are the core certs. Now, what's, why they're most interesting is because a lot of organizations have certifications. The majority of them have a certification for a skill set, um, right? So like PMP, Project Management Professional. Um, uh, thing, certain Agile, you get, you go to class, you, you, sometimes you have to take a test, sometimes you don't, you get certified and it's just a certification. Um, Idle is one of the few examples I can think of that is progressive. And I think there's an architecture certification that is progressive in, in its, in its, uh, certification levels. And IIBA does that for business analysts. Now, what that does when you have an entry level, a mid-level, and a professional level of the certification, it shows growth in the skill set, which implies it's a profession, not just something we do, right? Um, they also have a few specialty certifications. These are the three they have right now. The last time I spoke with leadership at IIBA, um, they didn't necessarily intend on implementing any new specialty certifications. They were looking at other ways to improve the value to their membership. So every year, IIBA does a salary survey. They want to make sure that the certification process and the tools and the value that they provide their, their members is, is making a difference for them. And so they check with their memberships. They also do a big wide swath of just sat surveying everyone on LinkedIn that they can get to respond asking, are you certified or not? What is your income? Things like that. And that gives us a, a lot better perspective of um, how many, how much of a difference does certification make. Of those respondents that did go through certification, a whopping 93% said they would do it again. That is huge, right? Um, and this right here is a perfect example. I experienced benefits immediately and then again, additional benefits within six months and then additional benefits within six months of that. And over since I've done that, I, I, I have more and more opportunities to make a difference as time goes on. Um, almost everyone reported an, an improvement in some form or, or, or other many reported improvements in more than one area, right? And higher confidence is going to lead to greater fulfillment, better opportunities, salary increases, all kinds of things like that. So largely, it, it makes a huge difference for individuals that go through that trouble. So it is worth it. I promise it's worth it. Um, so we talked a little bit about the certifications. Uh, ECBA is entry, no experience necessary. CCBA, that's mid-level, and I'm going to show you some more detail on what the qualifications are in a little bit, but know that ideally you have two and a half solid years of experience doing business analysis. Now, that doesn't, um, that doesn't mean two and a half years you've, he you've, you've held the title of business analysis, but half the time you're spent, you've spent doing project management. That's not two and a half years of doing business analysis work, right? So if you add up all of your hours, it needs to equate to about two and a half years. Um, CBAP, you need about five years of good experience, five solid years. Most of us that are business analysts don't just do BA work. So that usually takes people about seven years or more to accomplish, but it's very doable. Um, and I'll talk a bit about the numbers in, in a little bit. Um, so. Um, AAC, CBDA, CCA uh, is just about agile data and security. Now let's talk about these from the perspective of what is required of you. ECBA um, is, is one of the lowest level of requirements. There are no substitutions for experience in business analysis. I can teach you theory all day long and it'll get you started, but it will not make you a great BA. The only thing that makes you a great BA is experience and capability. So unlike some other certifications out there, IIBA will not let you substitute experience with education. It just doesn't work. So ECBA, no experience required. The only thing required of you is that you have done 21 hours of professional development in the last four years. Most certification prep courses will provide you that. Okay, so you're able to accomplish that while you're also prepping for your certification. Now, experience, let's talk about that. Um, CCBA, we said two and a half years. 
It's actually when you count the hours, it's less than two years of experience. But you're kind of you're you're riding the line of not having enough experience to really be able to answer the questions well. Okay, so 3,750 hours in the last seven years. That's not hard to accomplish, guys. That's like if you look at a typical work year of about 2,000 hours. You know, if you take out some things like holidays and whatnot. Um, this means that if you were to consider a typical full-time employment um with no overtime uh 3750 hours in the last seven years that means that in the last seven years 25 percent or so of your work hours need to be business analysis so what that means is if you're a project manager that's done some business analysis or you're a developer or a qa person or a business person that has done some business analysis you probably qualify for this level so just because you've never held the title of BA does not mean you don't qualify, okay? The other thing that comes into play with CCBA is references. The same amount of develop, professional development is ECBA, but now we require, because you're saying that you've done it for a while, uh, IIBA wants to hear from some people that you've done that around, right? People that you've done it for, people that you've done it with. And, and they want to know how, how, how effectively did you perform the function of business analysis. It's just a survey, you know, scaling you on one to five for specific elements. It's not that big of a deal. It's not like they have to respond with, a, with an essay or anything, and they're not going to necessarily get called. It's just a survey that gets sent out. CBAP, it doubles the hours that are needed from you, but, and, and, but it does not give you double the time to do it. It gives you an additional three years to do it. So what that means is this equates to a little closer to about 35% of your work hours being spent on business analysis. So what that means is you can still be a PM, a, a QA, a dev mixed with BA, and you probably still qualify. Same reference level, the other thing that, that changes though is the 35 hours in the past four years of professional development. And again, you usually get that with certification prep training. Um, if you're curious about which of these you qualify for, uh, as you see on your screen, you can, send, um, you can send your profile, either a link to your LinkedIn, or maybe you send us your resume and we can take a look at it and work with you to help you figure out what level's right for you. Let's talk about money and misery, okay? So, and when I say misery, I mean the exam. The fees, these fees are very specific to IIBA. These have nothing to do with adaptive. Um, so, and the reason there's a differentiation in the fee, it depends on where you live, what you pay. So if you're curious about how that applies to where you live, please go to IIBA a.org and look up the certification section and you'll be able to get all the information you could ever want to know about what they require of you and how much it will cost. So what you won't find there so readily is, is what to expect of the exam. So we're going to give you a little insight. ECBA, you will find that it's an hour um, and you will know that it's 50 multiple choice. What you won't know is what that's like. Okay, so um, ECBA is purely knowledge and theory you're going to be asked which of the following is a task that belongs in the knowledge area which of the following techniques would be suitable for this not for this task things like that it's almost like rote memorization okay because it's pretty straightforward if you're talking like work hours you can equivalent you can you can you can um this is about the equivalence of two work weeks of effort to studies 60 to 80 hours of pure study time now, most of us don't do this for a job, so we wind up doing it after hours, on weekends, things like that. And most people do that 60 to 80 hours in about a month. Uh, CCBA is three times the length, not quite three times the questions, because about half is that knowledge and theory, rote memorization stuff. The other half is this thing called scenario-based questioning, where it gives you about a paragraph, maybe two, of a situation. And you have to put yourself in that situation. And based on the question and the situation, you have to answer what you think would be most appropriate to do in that situation, okay? Now, so this makes it harder. It's a harder exam to pass. So it's about two to three work weeks worth of effort, 80 to 120 hours, and that usually is done by most people in about two months. 
And then you've got the most complicated exam they offer, which is the professional level, the CBAP. Um, it is half an hour longer than the CCBA, but it is fewer questions. There are no easy button options here. There are no rote memorization questions. Now, I still suggest you memorize because you don't want to be trying to remember what the BABOC called something and get confused with what you're used to it being called because um, you might be calling it something in your environment that a lot of companies call a specific thing, but the BABOC calls it something else. And you might see both options on your test. So it's important that you know the knowledge you, that you know the, the knowledge and theory, but all of your exam at this level is about application. So it's about half and half on scenario-based, which I described with CCBA and case-based questioning. And what that is, it's it's anywhere from one to three written pages with diagrams and all kinds of stuff. And you have to understand the whole story. And then you get a series of questions about that story that spread throughout the knowledge areas. This is them testing your ability to be a well-rounded business analyst. When I see a BA that has CBAP, my expectation of that individual is I can throw them at any project, at any complexity level, in any industry, for any functional department, and they're gonna be fine. They'll figure it out, right? So that's what CBAP means to me. That's why it's so powerful. All right, specialty certifications. These are super straightforward. No requirements, no professional development, no nothing, really. They all follow the pattern of the ECBA exam, just rote memorization, mostly, um, not really scenario-based, right? It's all about, do you know the content? Not, can you apply it? Just, are you familiar with it? Um, again, the fees are specific to IIBA. Sometimes they run sales. You'll wanna watch for that. The exam type, um, they are all just like the ECBA. They vary in their hours and questions, but because it's about rote memorization, um, it's about 60 to 80 hours of uh, of prep, most people are ready in about a month. So any questions about what I've gotten so far? I don't see any questions popping up for the sake of time and some of the stuff I really wanna be able to spend time with you on, which is like knowledge areas and understanding specific tips on taking the exam. I'm gonna keep going. If you do have questions, again, please feel free to toss those in that question tool and I will answer them as quickly as I can. Okay, so I'm about to cover some knowledge areas for you. Um, so keep in mind when I'm covering these knowledge areas, if you, um, in the BABOC, so one of the things I recommend you do, sorry, I know I'm being a little squirrely, you should, if you are really considering the certification, join IIBA immediately. Uh, join IIBA immediately. It's not that expensive and the value you get from it is just insane you'll get a free copy of the BABOC. That is what you will be tested on for the core certifications. You also get access for free to the Agile extension, which is what is tested with the AAC and the data analytics uh, 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 extension, which is the CBDA. In the BABOC, there's this thing called perspectives. And it's like, okay, so it takes the, the core of the BABOC and it says, how do I apply this in business information? How do I apply this in software development? How do I apply this in process improvement, right? And so it's not, you're not tested on those things. It's just a little bit of an additional thing that should help you um, understand what to expect, okay? Um, ECBA, you will not be tested on, on strategy analysis or solution evaluation at all. And you'll understand what that means in a minute. And uh, for CB, CBA and CBAP, you don't get any questions that are specific to underlying competencies. It's assumed that you apply those when you are working through the problems they give you. So ECBA, no one is tested on perspective. ECBA is tested on everything but this, and they are tested on underlying competencies. CCBA and CBAP are tested on everything except for perspectives and underlying competencies. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, so um, I have a question on, I've already got my PD hours, 
Um, I've seen some videos and I really like, uh, I like that. Even if you have your PD hours, um, I don't, if it, if it wasn't specific to passing the certification, your likelihood of passing, um, your likelihood of failure is 30%. So one, uh, three in 10 people fail, okay? Out, if you go through the certification preparation process with adaptive, then you are, your failure probability is only 3%. The majority of our students pass the first time. And that's because it's hands-on. You get a lot of quizzes. You get a lot of interaction with the, the trainers. You get one-on-one, -on -one, you get, not one-on-one, -on -one, but you get direct mentoring in, as a group with LN and you bring your, your questions after, as you're studying to him. And I'll get into that a little bit, but I still recommend you go through certification prep. It's very, very important. Um, do you want to read the whole BABOC before taking the CBAP? Everything but perspectives? Yes, you will want to do that. Um, Okay, so the BABA, how do I know what I'm going to be tested on and how do I evaluate my experience to know if I qualify, right? Um, so something else that I failed to mention on CCBA, you need, of the 3,750 hours, you either have to have two knowledge areas, which you see right here, with at least 900 hours of experience in each, or four of these knowledge areas have to have a good 500 hours each. CBAP has to have 900 hours in at least four of these knowledge areas because you are supposed to be well-rounded. All right, so let's talk about these knowledge areas. I will kind of tell you what most people wind up spending percentage-wise in each of these areas. Um, planning and monitoring, not exciting. It feels like managing meetings and stuff like that, or it feels like follow-up tasks, it feels like project management to me. Most people only spend about 5% of their time here. This is where someone has come to you and said, I have a problem or an opportunity. What, what do you want to do about it? Okay, so I start thinking about, am I going to, is this really risky or does our environment require me to do everything all up front before we execute? Or can I learn as I go and do it a little bit more agilely or adaptively? Um, I start thinking about, what did you bring to me? What are, what are the groups of people that are probably involved in that? What are they like? How do they need to be engaged to be successful in collaborating? Um, how do I need to go about getting information based on what we're trying to solve here? So that's planning stakeholder engagement. Also knowing based on what we're trying to solve and who the players are, uh, what's my governance? Who can approve things? How do I, how do I get everyone to agree on stuff? Do I have any, anyone that's a tiebreaker? Um, how am I going to manage the information associated with this? What tool am I going to use to store this stuff? How am I going to store it and, and maintain that? Um, and then like we're doing for everyone else, how do we improve it over time? How do we constantly improve our ability as a BA through this process? Okay. Um, so the other thing is next we have a licitation and collaboration. This is a bigger, uh, this is a more involved knowledge area. Most of us spend between 15 and 20% of our time here. Um, so this one is the first three tasks feel a lot like meeting management. I prepare for the meeting, I have the meeting, I follow up on the meeting, you know, with, um, with my meeting minutes and say, this is what I heard, is that what you meant? So same thing, but it's all about elicitation. Um, this is also where after we've done all of our requirements work and we're gonna share that stuff out, how we go about communicating that, that's managed in this knowledge area. And then the most difficult thing from my perspective that we do as analysts is managing people because they have feelings and you have to use psychology and you have to get people to work together and open up and all kinds of things like that. That is done in this knowledge area. Um, requirements life cycle management. Again, very similar to planning and monitoring. Most people, five tops, 10%. Um, this is where we maintain stuff, right? Not, not track stuff and do planning and monitoring feels a lot like project management. This feels a lot like um, meticulous keeping things updated, right? So this is where as we're writing our requirements, we're connecting them together correctly. Um, as we are working through the requirements and we realize things need things, our understanding is changing or status is changing or any of those things are changing about the requirements, we maintain them in this knowledge area. 
This is also the knowledge area we're engaging in when we get our customers to prioritize their need. And when they bring up new stuff, as they always do when we're in the middle of the solution work, um, this is where we take those new things and evaluate the overall change on what's the impact of that if we, if we agree to that, to that new request or that modified request. This is also after we've done the requirements, communicated them out, when once we've communicated it out and we get it approved, approval falls in this knowledge area. Okay, again, five to 10%. Strategy. Remember, this is one that is not tested for ECBA, for brand new business analysts. This is done at differing levels of severity or time, depending on what level of a business analyst you are. Um, if you are a somewhat younger BA, meaning newer to the profession, um, and you don't get a ton involved in strategy, the big strategy is done, and you work on strategy specific to the small changes, like a new button I need to add, or a, a rearrangement of things on a screen that already exists, then I'm going to do lower level strategy. If you are a senior business analyst that is engaged to even figure out you know, what do we want to do about this problem? Are we going to replace the whole software? Are we going to, are we going to do an overhaul of software? What's our approach to fixing this problem? That is done at a higher level by more senior business analysts. And this is where we ask ourselves, where are we today and why is that not working? Why do we have to change? Where are we trying to go? So that's current versus future. Uh, based on looking at that, what are the risks involved? of doing it, of not doing it, all of those things. And then we hit change strategy. In change strategy, we compare the difference between current and future and we get our gaps. We ask ourselves, how bad are these gaps? Can we handle this as a company to make this change? If the answer is yes, I'm gonna do something squirrely. I'm gonna jump down to RAD, I'm gonna do the entirety of RAD and then I'm gonna come back to change strategy. So I'm gonna do that with you. First, know that Younger business analysts, more junior business analysts spend maybe five to 10% of their time here. More senior business analysts usually spend anywhere from 10 to 20% of their time here. ECBA doesn't go here much at all, okay? Rad, so now that we have our gaps and we think it's worth working on, we start putting a little bit better detail to it. If we're early in change, we keep it high level with business requirements and feature understanding. If we have already done that and we've decided we're gonna implement SAP, okay, well now what, what sections are we gonna implement first and what needs are we gonna implement first? Well, then we do this again, but at a more granular level, right? So I will revisit strategy and RAD constantly. So this is where I draw pictures of what I'm talking about. I write words about what I need done. And then after I've done that, and I do know that I've got a few questions, as soon as I finish this slide, I will visit those questions, I promise. After I've got those written up, I've got my pictures, I've got my text, I need to work with my BA peers and the people that I expect to implement this and I have them look at this stuff and I say, did I do this well? That's verification. Did I write it with quality and can you use it to implement? Writing with quality is usually done by your peer BA, someone that knows what your stuff should look like. And then the people that are supposed to implement it, make sure that you have given a good, a good selection of deliverables that they can actually use to implement. As soon as I know that I have designed something and, and I'm not doing anything crazy and it all makes sense, now I go to my business and I say, is this gonna meet your need? That's validation. And then I also, so when I did my planning VA information management and I said, this is where I'm gonna store this stuff, these are the basic kind of documents that I might do. When I dig down in and I've done my strategy and I'm digging into requirements, I'm figuring out, out of all the documents or deliverables I could do, what is necessary and right for this specific change? A lot of people seem to think that business analysis is um, very, very structured. It is the least structured discipline I've ever done. It is a bit chaotic. And me as a good BA, I put structure around that chaos every single project I do. And every project I do is slightly different than the one before. And I may or may not do similar or same work deliverables, right? So I figure out based on what I'm trying to solve, what are the right things that I should define and how should that fit together to support this specific change? That is define requirements architecture. Now, once I've done that and I have an idea about what I'm trying to solve, 
now I define design options. I know many of you probably run into situations where everyone wants to go straight to solutioning right away. Well, then we're letting the technology drive the business decisions, and that's not what is supposed to happen. We need to figure out what we need, and then we can figure out how to meet that need, right? That is defined design options. This is where we define what, kind, what ways can I solve this? And then I probably start with a lot of options, but I need to narrow it down to a select few and then truly analyze the potential value of each option. And out of that process, usually one floats to the top and becomes the recommended solution. Now that I've done that, I go back to define change strategy. I present those top three, five, whatever, preferably no more than that. And I say, this was the pros, this was the cost benefit for each, these are the pros and cons of each, and based on all of that, this is the solution that's probably best. And as soon as the group decides on one of those solutions, now I have defined my change strategy, okay? RAD is where we spend most of our time. 30% of this is where, minimum 30% is what most people spend on this knowledge area. It is also, it also makes up 30% of your exam. It is the biggest exam portion, okay? Um, and then finally, we have solution evaluation. Solution evaluation is where we look at a solution and we ask ourselves, how well could this or how well is this meeting the need, right? This is where we look at KPIs that we're trying to accomplish or that we expect of a specific area. And we ask ourselves and we get data associated with those measurements. And then we look at that data and we say, does this look okay? If it does not look okay, we, we, we then dig into the solution and the enterprise limitations. What are the things keeping us from hitting the right KPIs? Okay, so when we're talking about managed solution evaluation, we do assess the solution and it is the first place we go. We're looking at the software, the processes, um, the data, we're looking at those things and asking ourselves, is anything wrong there? because those are honestly easier to fix. We also do, though, need to look at enterprise limitations. These are bigger picture things like the entire infrastructure, um, the facilities, the culture, um, all kinds of things that are bigger picture that might impact the solution, but are not specific to just that solution. They, they, they span multiple solutions, right? And assuming we find something, we recommend ways to increase the value. Of the, of the solution and help it uh, provide value that will improve those KPI results. Okay, so solution evaluation is again another low hitter. Maybe 5% of people's time is spent here, not much at all. So that should give you an idea about not only how the test is structured, but also help you think about the things you've done in your previous jobs, regardless of your title. Ask yourself, how much time do I think I've spent in each of these over the last seven to 10 years? And again, don't think about your title that you help. It does not matter. IIBA doesn't care. There's not a lot of consistency out there. Um, and I have a question about a, uh, an individual in college um, is going for NIS. When should she consider ECBA? After she graduates or the summer of her senior year? Um, so I would say that probably no earlier than the summer of, your, of her senior year because the information she's going to be exposed to in that college process, in that doing that curriculum for MIS, um, she's going to learn a lot of concepts that will give her some foundation so that when she, she's reading the BABOC and preparing herself for ECDA, um, some of it will just kind of make sense already. It'll be easier for her to relate to, which means she will have a higher success at retaining it. Um, in LA, uh, you know what I recommend you do? I recommend you go to, there's um, salary.com. Go to salary.com and look up a business analysis roles In it will give you the salary range based on experience and things like that for that role in your specific area. I recommend you go there because I don't have insight into that. Um, you have 20, I have someone in here that has 20 years of experience that's looking at the BABOC. Um, okay, so still I do recommend, uh, so Adaptive gives you very good, um, gives you very good tools for, and I'm gonna talk about it um, in just a moment. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what Adaptive specifically offers shortly here so you can see how that might fit into your decisions about going through certification. 
I'm not seeing any questions pop up about the top knowledge areas and tasks and things like that. Um, so again, you take that and you evaluate your experience and you figure out what do I think, um, how, how do I think that my experience falls into those buckets. Okay, some specific tips for passing the exam. Okay, every exam, even if you're not getting rote memorization questions, you should, by heart, know every knowledge area and the tasks within them, okay? Um, part of that, part of understanding the flow is uh, looking at the key inputs and outputs, right? What, what do I need to have to do this task and what should come out of this task? And that will help you remember the basic Pro, the basic flow of a business analyst slide. Now, this looks mostly clean, right? We have a pretty simplistic flow. I mean, not simplistic, but a pretty structured flow. In reality, this is the typical flow, but it's not the only flow. There are a ton of back and forth and jumping around and concurrent activity that can happen. But this will help you if you can, and, and you will have tools like this when you sign up with Adaptive, you get a ton of things like this that will help you study. Visual aids, we are 75% of our learning is visual for the majority of humans. You marry that up with text and audio and, and, and experience, which is called kinesthetic, you're going to be much more likely to succeed, okay? The other thing, the book has for the core, and we're focusing on core, the core certification, and as a hiring manager, I would prefer to see a core cert than a specialty cert. I want to know that even if I ask you to, to focus on a specific, I want you to implement information, I want you to implement um, an infor information, uh, an information security management program. Okay, great. But I also want to know that if I need you for something else, I can. So I prefer the core certification as a, as a managing, as a hiring manager. Um, and the core BABOC has 50 techniques in it, okay? 50 techniques, ECDA. You will want to know what those techniques are and what the strength of each technique is. You do not have to know how to read or understand them. CCBA, you will need to know how to read and understand them with the exception of UML. You are not tested on UML. CBAP, has the highest expectation on techniques of them. You have to be able to read diagrams, entity relationship diagrams, use case modeling, activity diagrams, all of these complex diagramming techniques, you will be expected to understand and be able to execute on. And this is not um, directly representing of the BABOC with techniques because it only lists each technique once. It lists the techniques in the knowledge area that most often leverage it, but what you will find in the BABOC is that functional decomposition lives in planning, elicitation, and RAD, and even strategy, possibly, if I recall correctly. So these, these techniques will live in multiple areas, but if you remember the areas that they are most often in, that will help you connect to it. Get a provider, get a learning provider, a training partner that has really good practice exams. Um, you're going to want both. You're going to want practice exams that are that are that are um, more simplistic and and build in complexity until you get a full on simulation exam. You want little quizzes and simulation exams. The other thing that you want is a tool that actually, if you answer it incorrectly, tells you what the correct answer was and why. Okay and some basic stuff. If you don't know it the night before, you're not gonna know it the night before. Don't try to cram. It actually will increase cortisol, which re reduces your ability to think well, and that's just not gonna be healthy for anyone. In the exam itself, the first few questions are gonna be doozies, most likely. What's cool about the tool that they give you to take the test is if you are uncomfortable with an exam question, you can be like, you know what? Um, I, my instinct says this one, but I'm not confident. So I'm going to flag that refer of you and I'm going to come back later. That way you don't get mired in one question that's really stressing you out. To try your best not to get unnerved in the beginning. Again, that cortisol starts releasing. It's going to be harder for you to think because your, your brain is going to be in fight or flight mode. You don't want to do that. The other thing is, like I said, 
um, some questions will have more than one answer that technically is, you know, could work, but only one is what BABOC is looking for. Only, only one is what IIBA is looking for. And they're looking for you to know what international best, best practices calls a thing, not what your company calls a thing, right? So that's why it's very, very important to memorize that terminology. Okay. Um, with CBAP particularly, these questions can be really, really, really long. I don't recommend you memorize the story. The story is going to be available for you to look at. Skim it. Find the important parts, particularly areas that have numbers, right? Um, and then read your question and then go back to the, if, if, you, if you didn't get the right information the first time, you can always look back at the story. But not all the, so you're going to have a lot of stuff in the story that's not necessarily going to impact your answer. So if you spend a lot of time really reading in depth every question, I mean, every story, you may run out of time. So make sure you get the important stuff out of the story. And then if you're missing understanding when you start reading your questions, you can look back at those long stories and the diagrams and pick out the things that you missed the first time and you'll be much more efficient at your exam. If you see language in the exam that says always, never, all of those very prescriptive words that are definitive, though that's a, that's a red flag. Because business analysis, again, is the most flexible, most chaotic, the most chaotic function of any that we've ever had. And so um, they give you a lot of flexibility. It's usually, well, it depends, right? It's never 100% ever. Um, now, the tool also has strike through capability. If you've got four, four answer options and two you know are not right, but the last two, man, you're struggling, cross out the ones you know are not right because that will help you focus on the two options that could be right. Now, a couple of you asked some questions specific about adaptive, and we're gonna get there in just a moment. So I already mentioned really good content. You really want someone that's been there, done that to help you through it. I talked about the questions. Questions are huge. Someone that can help you figure out what the right certification is for you. Um, you don't wanna, you, you wanna know what certification you're gonna be more successful at passing, right? Um, things like that. Okay, why us? Um, we have a pass guarantee. Now there are things you have to do. You have to be taking the quizzes, you have to attend class, things like that. Things that tell us you are applying the right level of effort and you get it, right? If you do, if you go through our quizzes, if you attend those classes, if you bring your doubts to LN during the little month, the little, uh, the little mentoring sessions that you get access to, you should be successful. We have a 97 plus percent first attempt pass rate. That's unprecedented. No one else can say that that I've ever seen or been to, which is why I'm willing to teach for adaptive, right? Um, so as long as you're doing those things, if you happen to be one of those very few that don't make it the first time, adaptive will pay for your second exam. Um, we have significantly higher success than the average. Again, 30% average failure, 3% or less with us. Um, we've done this a lot. It's all we do. Every month we do it, right? Um, I'm going to introduce you to the people that would be teaching you. Um, and you get access uh, to fortnightly exam prep Q&A tutorials with LN. He is, um, I don't know if he still is, but as of December, he was the only individual in the world that held all certifications offered by IIBA. Um, we have our online classes. They're online. They're interactive. You get a chance to ask people like me questions in the moment about the subject matter to help you ensure you understand it. We tell stories about using it in real life that help you relate to it. We help you fill out your application. It's just so much um, that you get from Adaptive. And we have a triple guarantee. If you want to know the parameters of these, please go online to AdaptiveUS.com and you can see all of these. And I do see your question, Niha. I will answer that in just a moment, I promise. Um, what does it look like from a timing perspective? Uh, well, first, we've got to figure out what should you do, right? What's the right level for you? Once we've done that and you sign up, the first two and a half weekends are theory. Um, we, give you, we give you some for four hours a day, and then we give you a week to almost a week to absorb that. Think through it. Take some quizzes about it. Make sure that you get it before we throw a bunch more at you. When I took mine, it was four days straight six hours a day, that was all I got. 
and it was crammed. Oh my God, it was so fast. I, I took the test three weeks later and I'm a good test taker. That almost killed me. And we've learned from all of those experiences that all of us have had, and we don't offer it that way. We offer it a way that you can absorb some, you can learn, absorb, learn, absorb, learn, absorb. So we're building on knowledge, not just throwing a bunch of information at you days in a row and hoping it sticks, right? As we're going through that, you start taking small quizzes about the stuff we're teaching you. Um, and then uh, we do have, um, you have opportunities for uh, engaging in those tutorials um, of the fortnightly at some point. You have all kinds of learning material available to you and they give you a plan. You know, there's this, uh, there's this tool that you get that helps you know what to do. And I'm gonna show you a whole section that talks about all the tools you get in just a moment. This is your training team. Um, Tom doesn't teach very often and when he does, he usually focuses on a class of just ECBA. Um, the rest of us, the four of us, we split, um, every month we split the classes. So you get Peter to kick it off, um, Ellen takes the se um, Ellen takes the second class, uh, usually, sometimes it's Victoria. These two split the second, third, and fourth and sixth classes. I take the fifth, seventh, and eighth classes. So mostly, I don't usually wind up teaching ECDA. I'm usually not engaged in that. Um, I usually teach the more complex elements, and that comes later for CCDA and CDAP. All of us have a significant amount of experience in business analysis. Um, Peter, myself, and Victoria have been leaders in IIBA. Victoria still is. I just recently I held that role entirely too long and I finally found someone that wanted to step in. It's a volunteer role. When we do that, we don't get paid. We do it because we believe in this and we believe in people like you guys and we want to support it. Um, so if you want to check it out, if you want to check out all the stuff you get with Adaptive, there is a free lifetime trial at succeed.net. So go to succeed.net. You won't get everything, but you will get a small amount of everything, right? And so that'll give you a feel for what it would be like to go through the training with us. It would give you a feel for um, what the materials are that you would have to study with and things like that. Uh, when you do that, you get some, CBAP gets 35, everyone else gets 21. You get all the necessary PD hours. Again, it's hands-on. We're there with you and all of us teach you little stories from our own perspective. So you get a really good breadth of exposure. Ellen has Get a study guide. It's almost like a cheat sheet for the um, for the exam. It takes the Babock and makes it more consumable. You still read the Babock, but you start with the study guide. That way, when you get to the Babock, it makes more sense for you. Tons of question banks and exam simulators. Um, we appeal to all of the learning types: audio, visual, kinesthetic, and you get these things with e-learning videos. You get access to the faculty. You can listen to audio books while you're doing things. You have some flashcards. I recommend you do those before the quizzes. Um, we also give you a prep plan. You take the prep plan. It knows what certification you're going for. You type in by when you want to be certified, and it tells you by when you should do every little thing you should do to ensure that you are successful. And we churn out the most certified analysts of any organization. We are the top certification provider for IIBA, and we have the highest pass rate. So uh, that should really speak for itself. Um, application simulator, it automatically assumes what percentage you spend in each knowledge area. I, I recommend you be careful about that. Um, you get to watch the recordings of people like me teaching you over and over and over again to make sure that you get it all. And you also get a workbook that you get to work through. Now there is an exams guide, it's absolutely free, and you can get that um, by going to succeed.net. You can have that forever. It'll have some things that you saw in this presentation, plus a little some plus a little something. Now the price thing. When I took my test, I paid over two thousand dollars for my class, and I did not get near what Adaptive gives. Not anywhere near it. Um, I have told them so many times that we underprice, but that's lucky for you, right? You as the consumer, you get an amazing deal. Now, there are some out there that cost this, maybe a little less, but you do not get the same materials. And often 
the students from those organizations, after they fail two or three times, they come to us and beg us to help them get past the test. Okay, so we uh, we have a lot of stuff, and um, like I said, most of our one of the one of the favorite things, one of my favorite things, is when we get these messages from our students, and they're so very excited because they went through all the pain, and they they were rewarded with it, and we get these stories from students all the time, all the time. Um, so uh, I have a couple of questions. Where do we send your resume? So send it to info at adaptiveus.com. Um, if you wanted to, you could go to adaptiveus.com and the email, there, there'll be an email link on there. Um, is there domain knowledge which facilitates clear exam? No, uh, these are not specific to domain. And there are, um, and you've got, you can look at domain several different ways. Some people perceive domain as industry. Some people perceive domain as specific specialty in the business analysis discipline, for example, um, uh, software development, so implement, information systems, uh, process improvement, um, information security. Uh, so those are considered domains as well. Um, but no, and like I said, when you do these, if I see the certification on your profile, I know that you are a well-rounded BA, and I can plug you into any domain, in any functional area of a business, solving any type of technology, process, people, or data problem, or any combination thereof, right? So that's what these certifications are supposed to tell people about you, is that you're, um, you're just a problem solver, period. You're just a problem solver, and you're objective about it. You're not, and ideally, so here's the thing, when you focus on, or on a specialty, a domain, and things like that, you can learn rather quickly because you're confined to a specific element of knowledge, right? It's easier to master something that's controlled, something that has boundaries, right? But that does not make a really great business analyst. That makes a really great subject matter expert, okay? As a business analyst, one of the most powerful things a BA has to offer is objectivity, innovative thinking, elegant solutions that the people that are too close to the business, to the tech, to the data, those people that are really close to those things will identify problems and solutions with, with blinders on. They'll only look at the things that they're familiar and comfortable with because they are, they have, um, they have biases and assumptions that are built in because of their expertise, right? Um, so if you already have PDUs, you can still sign up for, uh, for, there are different options you can look into to sign up with Adaptive and it gives you different things. Uh, there is a self-study program. You don't get access to the recordings or access to people like myself and Peter and Ellen and Victoria to help you learn and to help you know specifically how to pass the exam. But you would get just, you know, there are some self-study guides. Uh, the price difference is not that much. Uh, it just really, it's just really beneficial to sign up for the training because then you get access to LN. You get access to people like me and um, Victoria and Peter and LN for learning the core Babok and stuff. But then you get access to a series of like lunch and learns or evening learns. It, it depends on where you are in the world with LN where you've gone through the training, you've practiced the exam stuff, and there's just some stuff that's really hard for you to get past. You're just having a hard time grasping certain things and you will, um, you'll bring that to the group and you'll say, so I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get this, this idea down and I'm just struggling and this is why. And he will walk through that with you to ensure that you are confident and comfortable before you go to your exam. I missed a question earlier, is IIBA membership for lifetime? It's an annualized membership. Your first year is a little more expensive. After that, it goes down. It gives you not just access to, so you get access to the, uh, to the organization, which gives you a free copy of the Babok and all of the extensions. It gives you an online library of thousands and thousands of books um, that have BA, PM, all of that training in it, psychology. It's got psychology books in there, which is a lot of what we do, interestingly. It has a ton of, a ton of webinars available to you and you get access to local chapters where people get together, well, sometimes in person, right? Depending on COVID, but some areas are able to get together in person and they collaborate and they learn together with specific monthly topics. Um, 
I have a question. What is the final price for the ultimate package? If you are, if you want to know more detail on the packaging, please go online to adaptiveus.com and look at that. Um, I need to show you a code. So hopefully most of you are still with me because those of you that hung out the whole time with me get a special treat. Um, you're going to get a coupon code. I'm going to click this puppy right here and it's going to give you a code. You're going to want to write this down. If you're interested in taking the, um, if you're interested in taking the training with us and getting certified, then you're going to want to write this code down. This code is good for seven days. That is it. Um, and price same across all countries. Um, yeah, the price is in US dollars for the training. For the certification and IIBA fees, those differ depending on where you are in the world. Okay. I'm not seeing any new questions. I think I've answered everything. What are the fees for ECBA? So the fees for adaptive, you will go to adaptiveus.com to see the fees, and then you've got that $50 off. Um, for IIBA specific fees, um, the fees for IIBA, uh, you will want to log in and, and it will, it will um, based on where you're located, it will give you uh, the cost. One thing to keep in mind is that the year that you choose to get certified, you want to be a member, most definitely, because the price of your certification is discounted by the cost of membership. So what that means is whatever year you get certified, your membership is free. Okay. So you definitely want to join IIBA and um, it is extremely um, valuable. And I did, I answered the, the lifetime question earlier. Um, IIBA membership is annual. And Samir, go to adaptiveus.com and you will find some online exec prep study material. Um, there is self-study, which is just that, but you also get all of that plus you get access to the experts if you do the online training. The online training comes with everything that you would ever need for studying and prepping. It comes with all of the flashcards, all of the videos, all of the audios. It comes with tools. You get access to some tools to help you practice and you get um, access to videos of the recording that you did attend, hopefully, um, and you can watch those over and over and over. Uh, Sanjeev, so, yes, go ahead and send your resume over in email um, to um, info at adaptiveus.com and they will evaluate your resume and give you guidance on um, and give you guidance on the um, on what level you should go for. And keep in mind the coupons are limited. So um, I didn't I didn't notice that before. So um, you'll want to be aware of that. Any other questions? And Samir, you can you can get uh, you can go online and you can sign up for the self study material and it has all of the study all the study material without the direct training. Um, how different does a BA handle a scenario based question as compared to a SME? Um, a subject matter expert is someone that knows the business and usually they're in the business. So a SME is not a BA, really. If you're doing things that are doing, SMEs sometimes execute business analysis, um, but I'm not sure how to answer that question. A question bank only, no, there is no question bank only. Not that I'm aware of, keep in mind, um, I'm a trainer. So um, check, check at adaptiveus.com if you want to validate that. Um, CCBA. So one of the things that happened, uh, so are you asking about if it's training, you go through the training and then CCBA, ECBA only does the first five classes. CCBA hangs out for two more, uh, hangs out for, um, no, ECBA does the first four classes. CCBA does another two classes. So you have a whole nother weekend. One is about the more complex uh, training on, you get the strategy analysis and the, um, and the solution evaluation, and you get a class that all we do is go through some of the more complicated techniques, and we do, we do, we do exam questions together, not real ones, I mean, that would be cheating, right? But we run through simulations of some exam questions to ensure that you're understanding it. Um, I think I've answered all of the questions. 
we are a tiny bit over time. So please do this for me. Um, if you, um, I'm happy to connect with you guys. Um, you can find me on um, LinkedIn. No, info at adaptiveus.com. So I'm going to show you. Um, can you guys see my screen still? Let me make sure that you can see what. Yes, you can. Okay. So you're going to want to, um, if I go to adaptiveus.com, there will be a link for contacting. See right here, info at adaptiveus.com. That's where you want to send your resume for evaluation. Okay. You can also connect with several of us on LinkedIn. And if you if you look me up now, I can't answer questions like I, I'm not really going to be able to answer questions about um, fees and things like that. But I can answer questions about IBA and I can answer questions about what the training is like and stuff like that. You're going to be more successful emailing info at adaptiveus.com. But if you want to connect, you are welcome to connect with me. Please let me know that you attended the webinar because I get I get some invitations that I um, I don't I'm not comfortable accepting because I don't know who they are. Okay. Okay. Um, that is it. Um, I appreciate your time. I wish you all the best. I hope that you um, take that step. It was the best step that I ever made. I wish that I had had a different provider because it could have been easier. And that's what Adaptive tries to do is make it as easy as possible for you to pass. It is still, it is still work though. It is probably gonna be one of the more difficult tests you'll ever take, but it is worth it, I promise. I mean, 93% of business analysts that have done it say the same. So I wish you all the best. I hope to see you in class. Um, and don't forget that coupon code. Okay. Um, thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. Have a lovely rest of your day, however long that may be. Thank you.